to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. Let's have a little chat, shall we? <laughs> business for 90% of us is absolutely bonkers right now, isn't it? Right? I mean, did you hear our last episode of WTF a couple of weeks ago? Vita and I um, talked about the high demand in our industry right now, the back orders, the absurdly long lead times, the hard conversations that we're all having all around. We also shared some tips on how to get through it. So if you missed that episode, definitely go back and listen to it. It applies to all of us, window treatment professional, designer, stager, all the things. Um, the link will be in the show notes, okay? However, today I want to talk to you about the importance of working on your business always, not just when it's convenient, right? So first, let me start with a question. Would you ever present a design plan to a client without a full review of it? So whether you did it yourself the week or the week before, or you have people that work for you that get these things prepared, wouldn't you review it? You'd probably end up improving a little bit, tweaking it before you actually presented it to your client, right? And what about if you're really, really, really busy? Do you say, nah, never mind, <laughs> not going to review that before it goes out? No, I doubt it. Regardless of how busy a day or a week you are having, you stop the train. You take a moment or you take several hours so that you can present your best to the client. Even something as simple as a blog post or an Instagram post, regardless of how busy you are, you would spell check it. You would double check your links, all the things, right? Because we know it's important not just to do things, but to do them well and to do them the best we can. So what I want to understand is, why is it that when we're busy, we so easily throw aside the time to work on our business? And make no mistake about it, just like you can derail a design proposal meeting because you aren't prepared, you can derail your business too by not being prepared. And being prepared takes time, effort, and consistency, even when you're busy, okay? Here's what I know. It always takes time to work on your business. We all need to be constantly reviewing our processes, tweaking our marketing, closing down the gaps in the places we haven't mastered, whether it be knowing our financials like a pro or establishing a strategy for growth that includes trackable metrics. There is no vacation from this. There is no, I'll do it next week, next month, or next year, because that day doesn't come, right? Intentionally working on our business is a habit that needs to be cultivated. It needs to be important to us and it needs to be intentional. Here's another thing I know. There's always something to get in the way of this. There is, there just is always something. We say things like, after the kids go back to school, after my vacation, after I wrap this one project up, after what? You fill in the blank. You probably already have a few good, I can do this after <laughs> lines of your own, right? We do it. We do it to ourselves all the time. And I hear you. Sometimes it is hard when the kids are off and we are crazy busy like we are now in this industry. But is making time for streamlining your systems, for improving your marketing, for getting a handle on your real project cost really harder than chasing your tail, making the same mistakes, dropping the same balls, facing the same upset clients or facing different clients over the same issues, right? Is it really harder than having that never ending Groundhog's Day, going to sleep with that sick pit in your stomach and waking up with it again the next day? Come on. It's not. I, I mean, look, 
Do you know how I get to how I'm able to describe these things so clearly? <laughs> because I've been there, <laughs> right? Right? And, and, and the thing is, I get it. I get it. It's hard. But I've been in there and I've done it both ways. I've done it with, oh, after this and after that and after this, then I'm really going to sit down. I'm going to buckle down and do it. And then I've been there in the seasons of my business and where I finally just understand that this happens all the time. It just always happens. It's, it's like for those of you that exercise, it's not like, oh, I'll exercise when it fits in my day. It's like, no, I get up, I walk out the door and this is what I do first. This way I know it's done, right? For those of you that read religiously, that have a practice of reading every single night. I hear about people that read 60 books a year for crying out loud, right? Like that doesn't happen by accident. That I would love to read 60 books a year, right? But I don't intentionally make the time for it because that's how that happens. And so what I've learned is, it actually seems very hard to make the time, but it is never harder than actually experiencing the mistakes and that Groundhog's Day feeling of why does this keep happening, all right? So because here's the thing too, I do hope that you have planned time for this summer, right? I really do. I hope that you have a nice vacation. I hope that you have made an opportunity to rest and recharge. But the thing is, I want you to be able to do that with a clear head. I want you to be able to sit on that beach and really enjoy it and look at your kids if you've got kids or just look lovingly into your spouse or your partner's face and say, isn't this awesome? <laughs> but not think, I wonder what the heck is happening back at the business, right? I want you to enjoy your time with your family and friends. I want you to know that you've taken the steps to keep your business on track and to have the confidence that you are heading for the big picture goals that you have for yourself, right? Now, pre-pandemic insanity Maybe you're one of those smart business owners, smart lady or smart guy that has been setting aside time every single week for working on your business. I can think of a couple of people that I know that have said to me, I work on my business every Friday. I put it in the calendar and that's what happens. I work on my business every Monday for half a day, whatever it is, okay? But what happens is when you get busy, it sort of starts to go by the wayside. Okay. And what I want to tell you is when you're in high seasons of business like this, so I don't know, do we know if this is going to last two more months or two years? We don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, right? But I know that it is okay to reduce the time that work you work on your business in these high stress times, okay? High demand, right? But it's not okay to abandon it, okay? So maybe you don't do all day Friday, but you do something. You don't just say, because it's like when you stop going to the gym again, right? So, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I missed the gym for two weeks because I'm on vacation. And the next thing you know, it's four weeks and it's six weeks. And it's like, pff, you're starting all over again, right? And that's what happens when you walk away from the habit and the practice of working on your business, okay? And this is why even though our industry is on fire, we are still having a summer semester of Lou Yu. We could have easily waited until the fall, right? In fact, really easily waited until the fall. But if you are one of those people in the audience who knows that even the commitment for just one hour and 15 minutes a week for six weeks to work on your business is you know you need the accountability for that to keep the momentum going, to keep your roller coaster on the track, then it'll be worth it. It'll be more than worth it, okay? You will be the one to see the results. You will be the one to make a dramatic difference in your business that your future self, especially your Q4 2021 and your Q1 2022 self will thank you for. I know it. Okay, because who knows when this hurricane of business will subside, right? You, can you put off locking down your operations for six more months, another year, 18 months? I don't know. I don't know. All I can think of is how many problems you could avoid if you had better handle on the business side of your business. And when this massive influx of business comes to an end, Will you have been doing the marketing all along? Because when it does come to an end and it does slow down, 
You need to be the one who's top of mind for the consumers that are still coming into the marketplace. Right now, they're coming in droves. Will it last, like I said, six months, a year, 18 months? But it's going to subside. Businesses, you know, business cycles go up, they go down all the time. Been there, done that too, right? But I know that at Window Works, we're always talking about not so much the marketing for now, but the marketing for future. Like, what are we doing to stay top of mind? Like, what have you done for me lately type of a thing, right? So this is the way business is. It cycles your whole career. There will be highs. There'll be lows. There'll be busy times. There'll be slow times. You know, to be the one standing five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 or 40 years from now, you cannot abandon the precious time you carve out to strengthen your business skills. It can wane. Like I said, you can go from 12 hours a week for to scheduling working on your business to two hours a week, but it should never be skipped or, po- or postponed. This is just the reality. This is the difference between exceptional and average. And I ask you, which one are you? Exceptional or average? Okay. So at Luann University, I have vetted the experts for you and they are here ready to help you and inspire you to be exceptional from understanding your finances to project costs to marketing to sales and video we have it all covered i'd like to run down the summer 2021 semester for you and have a little treat we've got each of our instructors here to tell you in their own words why they know their class their class is valuable Okay, so first up, let's hear what Peter Lang, the designer CPA, and Kathleen Anderson have to say about online bookkeeping 101 and 201. In bookkeeping 101, we are walking through all the basics of what it is that you need to be doing as an interior design business to run your business like a business. We go all the way from setting up your QuickBooks account to naming your accounts, to classifying your projects and clients, to reports, um, reconciling your bank statements. You can really start from, you have no idea what you're doing with your bookkeeping to confidently at least having tabs on your projects or profitability. Now, in all fairness, most of us are probably outsourcing our bookkeeping. The things that we learn in this class are really essential to being that knowledgeable boss or bookkeeper. Um, I outsource my bookkeeping. And so I go through the exact process that I go through in my business, how I keep things organized and how I know pretty much all times how my business is doing, where my cash flow is and what bills I have coming up. So that is bookkeeping 101. All right. And here's Peter, right, to tell you why 201 is worth your time. The online bookkeeping 201 using QuickBooks to master your finances is a great class for anyone who is looking for the ability to find the financial statements they need and also how to read those financial statements in order to make better decisions about the financial health of their business. The course is important because you'll not only learn where to find them and how to read them, but you'll also know whether or not your bookkeeper is staying on top of all of the accounts and knowing that when you're looking at these reports, they're accurate. The benefit of taking the class, well, students that have completed this class have said that now that they're done with the class, they know where to find the financial statements. They also know how to read them, but they're making meaningful decisions and processes to make sure that they're books are accurate all the time. They're able to build processes to get money paid faster from their customers. They now have the ability to look at their reports and know exactly how much money is really theirs versus a vendor versus maybe a government authority for sales tax. They're also using tools from the class to make future financial decisions like when they can invest in a bigger office space, when it's time to hire the next team member, or even how much they can pay themselves out personally. Some of the risks of not taking this course would be you will never know how your business is financially doing and if your reports are accurate if you don't know where to look. Your, is your bookkeeper actually doing the work you're paying them for? 
we talk about where to look at these reports. You could be looking at reports that are completely inaccurate and useless every time. And if you don't know how to read the reports, then it might look good for you, but you'll never truly know if your business is a financial success. For these reasons, I would highly recommend taking the class. You will have the ability in the future when you're done to know that your business is accurate financially and you'll have use all of that information to be able to make ca future cash decisions uh, to meet your financial goals. Now, is it finally once and for all time to get your head wrapped around your finances, to learn how to track and record your numbers and then learn how to analyze and rely on your numbers to make solid decisions? I mean, just finally, right? Okay, just finally. All right. Then we have Kat Anderson, who is also teaching, in addition to uh, Online Bookkeeping 101, she teaches Design Build 201. And Kat is going to give you a little bit of background on the differences between Design Build 101 and Design Build 201 and why they are both so important. Okay. Hey guys, this is Kat. So I just wanted to speak to the question that we've been getting the most, which is what's the difference between Design Build 101 and Design Build 201? So in Design Build 101, Jenny Slingerland takes you through the process of creating a spec book, which is your deliverable as a designer when you're engaged in a building project. It's the book of information that you give a builder with all of kind of the instructions and specifications for what you would like installed in the house. So in Design Build 201, we take that next level and we take trade by trade and take a deep dive into things I've seen go wrong on a job site, things that have cost me money, and ways to show up as a professional. So I've been working around construction sites really since I graduated from interior design school almost 15 years ago. I worked for a um, contractor before I went to architecture school. And then after architecture school, I came back and worked for a contractor again. I've pretty much done everything on a job site that is not directly, you know, swinging a hammer or doing the trades. I've done project management, superintendent, bookkeeping, all the things. And um, these are just kind of the highlights of what I've learned in the last 15 years and the ways that I have, um, cost myself money, save myself money. And so my goal with this class really is to just help you show up as a professional um, and also to help you run a more profitable business. You heard her. Learn all the big and little things that you need to know to keep your renovation and your new build projects on track with confidence that you know what you're doing. All right. With the experience that Kat has, you know, you are in good hands. I'm telling you, you are in good hands. All right. And just so you know, have no fear. Jenny Slingerlin will be back in the fall with Design Build 101. All right. Now, next, we're going to hear from Ariane Belazar, who is teaching video for creatives. But before we get to that, I want to say and share with you that Ariane took Design Build 101 and 201 in the winter session. OK, she took them at the same time. And I typically go into the last class and I ask everybody their aha moments. And during that class, I asked Ariane, I said, how was it taking both 101 and 201 at the same time? Was it harder? Did it make sense? I mean, I wanted to know if going forward, I needed to caution people about doing this. Ariane is an experienced interior designer and I, you know, know her well enough to know that she probably could handle it. But I really was curious. And she said, no, 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 no. It was perfect doing this together. She said, if I had done one and then the other, it would have been good. It would have made you know sense and it would have been fine. But she said, because I did them together though, while I was learning with Jenny to create my own design build book, I had the benefit of Kat's class in real time, which enabled me to put tons more detail into that book. Okay, making it an even more comprehensive book. So I thought that was great information and good for me to understand. And maybe you appreciate understanding it, understanding it as well. 
The other thing I want to share before we get to Ariane's little uh, audio clip here is I want to share with you the message that Ariane emailed to Jenny. Um, and then she sent it to me. And Jenny also sent it to me because she was so excited when she got it from Ariane. I'm going to read it word for word. It says, hey, Jenny, great class today. Just wanted you to know your course is already paying off for me. The builder for the new construction pot project I'm currently working on has complimented me on my superior, in caps, organizational skills and has said each vendor I'm working with on his behalf has called him to ask him to use me on more jobs for this same reason, <laughs> okay? And she said, and last week he contracted with me to work on two spec homes with a promise to send more custom work my way as well. And there's more. Our firm has been invited to present for three apartment complexes this week. Ariane says, this is all because of you and this class and the things I learned. Thank you. So I have to say, this is the kind of results that you can look forward to when you work on your business, when you up-level your skills, when you block time to work on your business. You elevate things, right? You elevate yourself and your business to exceptional. Your work product, your skills, your talent, your systems, your confidence, all combine to create a business and a reputation that earns you more of the kind of business you want. All right. And now to Ariane herself, I, this is what I love about this community. I, I, lo I love that I get to meet all of these people with these amazing superpowers. And I mean, Ariane, she's here to teach video cre for creatives. And if you know her either personally or through social media, you know she is exceptional at creating quality video with terrific content. All right. This is my hang up. I have no problem going on video or going live, but I have no idea how to create the content in what Ariane has explained to me that should be looked at as a story arc. Okay. So the idea of a story arc is not foreign to me. I need to do this in writing of the books and the articles I write for AD. Pro and Window Fashion Vision. So you think I get it, wouldn't you? Well, I don't. Really, I just don't. And one time, Ariane and I were on a trip with the Design Hounds together, and that's a shout out to our friend, Veronica Eagleson. And I swear to goodness, I must have drilled Ariane for, I don't know, maybe two hours <laughs> on how she approaches creating video. Okay. And she was generous and she was helpful and she told me every single thing she could tell me. But you know what? You can't learn that in an hour bus ride to a winery in that, but you just can't. So I asked her if she would create this class and she said, right, right. She said, yes, right away. And I don't know who's happier, me or her, because <laughs> I know I need this class and I know that you'll be happy because Ariane knows her stuff. All right. So let's hear Ariane explain uh, why why this is such a powerful class to take. The uh, secrets to conquering the beast of video for social media. And in this course, what I am looking forward to doing is to help you build confidence in why it's important to invest in video and give you an understanding of how it can absolutely change your business. In this course, I'm gonna tell you how to use video, of course. I'm also gonna tell you why it's important and all of the ways that you can integrate video very easily into your internal and external communications with your clients, your team, and of course, the audience that's watching you. I also am going to give you case studies of how video has transformed my business. I'm gonna show you actual numbers of how when I show up on video, I see an actual tangible result in my bottom line. I'm gonna show you how I have used video to garner major partnerships and give you some scripts that I've used to be able to partner with brands. And of course, I'm going to show you how to show up confidently on social media consistently so that you build value into your brand and you attract more of the right clients and more of the right projects. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about Rachel Moriarty. How about that, okay? Rachel is teaching vis visibility for creatives, all right? Do you want to create a following, work with brands, get PR opportunities? Rachel covers it all in visibility for creatives. And again, if you already know Rachel through the podcast or through her Facebook group or her book or her brand collabor collaborations or her speaking gigs, then you get it, right? Rachel is visible. And she has created this in just five years. You have to listen to both of her episodes on the show. But on the second one, you will hear how this path to 
significant exceptional visibility started because she sat there at the middle of one summer and looked and said, I don't have a single client lined up. I don't have one piece of business in the door or potentially. And she said to herself, I have to do something. I have to take charge of my business and I have to get my name out there. And she started with a 30-day Facebook Live challenge. And it ends and continues today with all of the things I mentioned above and more. Rachel knows what it takes to create visibility from, as she says, invisibility. And she is here teaching you everything she knows and everything she did, right? So let's hear from Rachel. Hey guys, this is Rachel and I'm the instructor for Visibility for Creatives. I am so excited that we are going to get to spend six weeks together where we're going to map out your own personal visibility concoction with the goal of naming your niche, creating credibility, and of course, profitability for your business. I am honestly so passionate about visibility because I'm seeing far too many talented designers out there that I know want to help people create beautiful homes and lives, but Unfortunately, they're inconsistent in their marketing efforts, so they're not able to book the clients, they're not able to help the people, and they're also not getting paid. And they're not growing their business because they're stuck at this first critical roadblock called invisibility. Visibility for creatives is going to give you the certainty, the clarity, the confidence about who you serve and how you serve them so you can begin finally attracting more clients with a lot less effort. Plus, we are going to have a blast doing it. I cannot wait to get started. So let's go. I'll see you there. I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> I love following Rachel and seeing all the things she does. So I'm so glad she's part of Lou University this year. All right. Now, I want to share with you what Kimberly Merlitti has to say about understanding the project costs of every project and why you must take this class. At some point this year, this this is the thing. It's um, If it's not the one that you start with, that's okay. But this should be a non-negotiable class on your to-do list. All right. Here, I'm going to let Kim explain to you why. Hi, everybody. This is Kimberly Merletti with KMM Consulting, Project Profitability at Luann University. Um, this is going to be a great course. It's not accounting. It's going to have a lot to do with understanding if your projects are making you money. Um, another thing I was talking to another client about was making this a class that you can send your staff to, to maybe, um, maybe do an analysis of their uh, technique or their skill in this area. I w always say, and people have heard me say this, that um, senior designers should know how to look at their project profitability. So if you have a senior designer that needs to brush their skills up a little bit, or even a mid-level designer, please have them attend this class. I will give you a full summary of how they did after. I think it's a good investment to have your staff attend this class, not alone. Even with the principals there, I think it's a good team event. I have a couple of clients that are signing their entire company up for it. And I think it'll be great. Um, there's a, it'll start a lot of healthy discussion. It'll increase everyone's knowledgeability on costs and revenue um, and margins on their projects. And I want to see you guys register this week for the Project Profitability 101. Everyone have a wonderful week. All right, so you can see that Kim is not fooling around. She is dead serious about you understanding exactly what your net costs are on every project, every line item, and understanding your net profit. She is also dead serious that the, the people that work on your team need to understand this too. You're empowering them to design projects, to make decisions. And, you know, it all comes back to is the project profitable, not just is it beautiful. This is the whole premise of the podcast. We know you can create beautiful. Can you create profits? Okay. So with this class, you are going to understand how to run a project in the black. All right. And I have to say, if you're finally sick and tired of that crappy feeling of, I think I'm making money on my projects. I mean, I got a big check. Then this class is for you. 
All right. I don't want you and Kim certainly doesn't want you to chase your tail year after year, working hard, but not seeing the money in your personal bank account. You know, do you know, I have to tell you, you would probably be surprised at the number of heart to heart conversations that I have had with designers over these last five years that ultimately end up sharing with me that they are taking home less than $40,000 a year in personal income in a business that they're working full time in. Think about that. And do you know what I say to every single person who has ever admitted this to me? Why do you pay yourself with your experience, your work ethic, with your dedication to the clients less than what you would pay a junior designer at? You know what I mean? How about this? This is the other thing I usually say. Why would you do all this? Why would you have all the risk, the headaches, the interior design emergencies while you're with your family at the beach for that kind of money? You can go and be someone's senior designer for probably 80 or 90K. So I I, I don't get it. And the answer is typically because I haven't figured out that little secret formula for understanding how to make the money, how to price the projects so that the money is left over for me as the principal when we're done the project, right? So it happens over and over again, and it makes me sad, and it breaks my heart, right? So I have to say, um, this is the result of when you don't understand the bookkeeping, if you don't understand your finances, finances, and you don't understand the actual costs of a project. You go along, moving money in and out of your account, you keep things afloat, things get paid, but you ultimately mentally kidding yourself that your business is successful. And you're also never realizing all the benefits that you should be earning by the risk you are taking by being self-employed. Think about that. Being self-employed carries a risk. If something were to happen tomorrow in your business that you could not you say you're a solo or say you're, you know, a team of 20, whatever it is, some something, I'm not even going to put any negative juju in the universe by naming it, um, prevented you from ever being a day in that business again. Do you know every single invoice that you have on the books? You have to pay whether you ever show up again or not. <laughs> like that's yours. I remember last year at the beginning of COVID with Window Works, we sat there and we were like, hmm, this is six figures <laughs> in invoices that we have. Um, and if we never sell a blind, a drape, or an awning again, hmm, we're going to be in a pretty interesting spot. And that's the reality. You know, just think about if you rent a studio. I don't care if it's a $500 a month studio. If you've got a lease, you can't just close the business and say See, sayonara. These are the risks that you have as a business owner. So, and they're fine. We mitigate the risks, right? We do things like learning how to do video and marketing and um, all the things so that we can make our business grow. But we need to get paid too. That's the juice, right? That's the juice. And I don't care if you want to earn 80K, 300K, a half a million. I just want you to earn what you would pay somebody to do the job in your firm. So if you're working in your firm at two days a week and you're making 40K, okay, (laughs) that's great, great. But objectively look at what you do in your firm and then you tell me what the going rate is for what you do. And then I want you to tell me that you have a plan in place to pay yourself that rate because that's what running a successful business is all about. All right. All right. It starts there. It starts with knowing your numbers, learning how to set prices and fees that earn the profits that you deserve to be profitable, to be the CEO that the name on the door says you are, right? Okay. All right. Now we are at the seven step proven sales process taught by Jessica Harling. This class was developed by uh, Exciting Windows founder Steve Burston. He developed this class in order to teach window treatment professionals how to be more profitable, how to sell window treatments with higher close ratios and higher gross margins. I have taught this class for the last several years, okay? This is a long, long standing, well proven class, okay? And this class is a game 
changer. And the process definitely applies to interior design staging as well as window treatments, okay? First of all, selling is selling. That's 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 number one. But number two, Jessica Harling is well-schooled in the home decor industry, a third-generation um, uh, family member in, in a big in interiors uh, business. And she has, in her own business the last several years, personally worked with dozens of window treatment pros as well as interior designers, teaching them how to be more effective in their phone conversations so that they get more appointments in their home consultation so they get more design pro proposals signed, okay? She knows her stuff, and I am thrilled that she is teaching this class, and I'm so grateful to my partner, Steve Burston, at Exciting Windows for letting us fold this class into Lou University because it is my hope and desire that more people will find the class through this platform and more people will change their business for the better by having access to it. So let's listen to what Jessica has to say. I had the fortune of going through the proven seven step system over four times before I came an instructor myself. I have seen my sales double because of being consistent with the process and have seen my colleagues sell over a million dollars a year. After becoming an instructor over 10 years ago, I had the privilege of training over 700 people and seeing their sales skills improve and result in increased average sales going from 1,500 to 4,500, close rates going from 40% to 75%, and people producing over 50 to some 100,000 a month and beyond. I have totally drank the Kool-Aid and I am a true believer that if you educate yourself, practice the material, apply it to your appointments, and keep it consistent for every appointment that you will skyrocket your sales by just having the confidence in the numbers. My favorite part of teaching this course is watching the naysayers at the beginning go through the journey of discovery and realization that this process actually works. And it doesn't take a year to see the results. You can find results if you apply the material in just 30 days. So my advice to anyone that is going through this training is trust the material to begin with and just dive right in because you'll expedite your sales increase and results immediately following the course. And finally, our beloved Sarah Lynn Brennan. The proof in the pudding of how you can build an extremely profitable business from the ground up with no experience and in under three short years. <laughs> I mean, this kid is, is the proof of every single lesson of the podcast. For the first two years of her business, Sarah, Sarah devoured the podcast. And I have to tell you, she's probably still the first person that listens every day that it comes out because she often will leave me a message about the podcast, all right? Um, but she devoured the podcast. She literally took to heart pen and paper, taking notes on almost every single episode and learning from all of our guests um, all of the lessons and putting them into action. In addition to this, Sarah and I spoke on the regular. Often she would call me and say to me, in this show, they talked about that. I don't, I, you know, break it apart for me a little bit more, or I've been doing it. It's not working. And then of course we would take it apart and break it in and see how she would apply it to her business. And often it was just, um, uh, what do I want to call it? Experience, almost like a conceptual thing. It's like, if you haven't done it before, you sometimes have that little disconnect on, oh yeah, I get it. Um, but this was quite a journey and quite a fast journey. And it really was because she worked on her business on the regular. Okay. It was never like, oh, I'm so busy now doing these three projects, but I'll do that sometime next year. It's like, no, 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 no. Always in real time, every single week, Sarah put the time in. And the result is this multi six figure business with a, um, actually, I, who am I kidding? It's a seven figure business now. It's a seven figure business with a multi six figure personal income and a growing staff and a roster of clients in her pipeline. Okay. And just so you know, this class was previously called Process Leads to Profits. So if you've been watching and seeing the different promos and 
social posts that we have and you're like, where's process leads to profits? This is profits leads to profits, okay? Process leads to profits. We renamed it because, you know, I needed to have a department name and it just started to make sense that there are multiple things that go into the process part of our business, like design build 101 and 201. That goes into process because we teach you the process of a design build um, execution, right? So um, if you are like, wait, how to build systems in your services? What's that? That is the previously named process leads to profits, okay? So it's the exact same class that you have heard your colleagues rave about. And I have to say, if you have any sleepless, sleepless nights, if you have knots in your stomach, if you have any doubts that you can manage all the things on your plate, this is the place to start. And Sarah is the lady to help you because she will help you create duplicatable systems that will give you the peace of mind that you are leading and running great projects and you are leading and running a well-run company. So here's Sarah to tell you a little bit more about what you can expect and what you can, um, you know, not only from the class, but for your business in the aftermath. Hey, it's Sarah Brennan, and I'm so excited to be here talking about Louisian University, all of these amazing courses, and my course, which is called How to Build Systems into Your Services. And I am just a living testimony of how this can impact your life and your business life. And listen, I know right now we are all really, really busy. Or maybe you're seeing people around you be busy and you're not as busy as you want to be. But I know it's a crazy time. I know it's summer. I know kids are home. I know all those things. But now is the time. The demand is there for our interior design industry. And I want you to not just learn how to become a really great juggler. And Luann taught me this lesson one time. She said to me, Sarah, I know you're a really good juggler, but how are you ensuring when you drop a ball, everything isn't going to shatter? And that sentence and that line like just hit me right between the eyeballs because I thought, oh my gosh, I don't have any safety net. I have none. If I drop a ball, it's going to be bad. And so what I learned is creating these systems and processes become your safety net. You don't want to just be a good juggler because you know what? There's a lot of pressure in that. What you do want to know is that if you happen to step out of line, if you happen to forget something, your process and your systems are going to be what come through and save you. They're going to be those checklists. They're going to be those cross checks. They're going to be those, those processes that allow you to say, whoop, I missed there, but I'm back on track here. And with the growth of your business, you're going to need these processes and systems so that you can scale, so that you can ensure your clients have a reliable and repeatable experience that helps you build your reputation, that helps you to grow and learn with each project and keep improving each time. But if you're not documenting these things, you might make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And I've heard that through and through. People come to me and say, oh my gosh, I don't really have a process. I don't really have systems, but I keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And that's when we know it's time for implementation of process. And with being busy, with there being extra demand for us, you can use your income. You can use the extra income that you're getting right now to propel your business forward. So you don't just want to be busy. You don't want to have all of these things happening. You want to have a plan so that you can ensure success of each and every single one of your projects. I know what it's like to have that mental load of this project, that project. Oh, I can't forget to do that. Oh my gosh, it can be so stressful. So having these processes in place can allow you to rest a little bit, have some free space in your mind because you've already created this plan and this path to success for your clients and for you and the success of your firm. So I am so excited to see you in this course with me. I've worked with so many interior designers who are 
in your same position right now where you're not sure if it's the right time to invest. You're not sure if you have the capacity to take on this course and and do it, but I wasn't sure either. I didn't have anybody to sit down and teach me these things. I had to basically invent it myself through hard life lessons learned. Um, And so I'm here to help you, whether you've been in business a minute, whether you've been in business 30 years, these are all simple things I can teach you to implement into your business and make your life whatever you want it to be. Um, And so I'm just so excited about that. And I appreciate the opportunity to work with Luann on this amazing platform. And I will see you in class soon. Bye. So the only thing left is that darn decision, right? Will you be intentional this summer, despite kids, the busyness, despite your own scheduled downtime? Will you remember your business is a living entity which needs certain things to be successful? to give you back what you deserve from it, right? You know, the Vincennes has a saying. He says it often throughout the year at our team meetings at Window Works. He says, businesses are never stagnant. They're either growing or they're contracting. And he goes on, he says, we always want to be growing. We want to be growing in our knowledge, growing in our revenue, growing in our services, growing in our ideas, growing and achieving our goals. So I wonder, and I do hope that you share this ideal to grow and to take care of your business seriously. All right. Thank you tons for showing up today. Please visit luannuniversity.com where you can find more information and how to register. We start July 5th, 2021. I hope I will see you there. I hope that this summer you will work on your business. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.